I have with me here the first Gemini Lake tablet that I'm going to be reviewing in the channel. This is the AudioCube Keynote 5. It is an 11.6 inch 1080p IPS tablet. It runs Windows 10. It has 4 gigabytes of double data rate for RAM. It has 128 gigabytes of storage, wireless AC, which will be the Intel 3165 chip that is very common and frequent in all of the devices normally that I'm reviewing now. So this also does support an optional keyboard, which I happen to have with me right here. So let's check out and see what we get in the box and exactly what the tablet is like. I'll check this keyboard out first. So this is probably exactly like the Keynote 8 keyboard and I can see that, yeah, very similar design. Of course, it's smaller because it's just for an 11.6 inch tablet. So we have this stiff hinge on the back to get your position right. And you see that it just actually sits in here, the tablet, and we've got, by the looks of it, yeah, that's actually quite good travel on those keys. So very, very similar and really the same exact design as mentioned as the larger version. So this is gonna be a decent keyboard. The touchpad, I don't believe is gonna be using Windows Precision drivers. I will have to check that out, of course, though. We do have shortcuts there for your media controls. Now, the Keynote 8 keyboard was backlit. I don't believe this one is. In fact, no, it doesn't mention it anywhere. So safe to say that this is not a backlit keyboard, this one. Do have buttons there for, for print screen, page up and down. And now our tablet. So it is wrapped up with a plastic wrap around it. Put it to a side for a minute and we'll take a look at what we get here. So we do have an adapter there. So this is USB 3 to type C. Going to need that because there's no full size ports on this one. All right, here we have a quick guide. So this is in Chinese and on the other side, it is in English as well, which is great. And here is our power supply. 12 volts, 2.5 amps, and the positive with the DC plug there is in the middle, as you can see, negative on the outside. Okay, so I can see that it comes with a pre-applied screen protector, but I'll just check the weight of it first. So 825 grams means it's not super light, but hopefully the total package will be under a kilo, I hope, but I don't think it's going to be actually because that keyboard isn't exactly the lightest either. No, it's way over, so 1.33 kilos in total. The tablet is 9.5 millimeters thick. Then with the case, it doubles the size of it now to 18.1 millimeters thick. So the bezels are rather large. We've got a webcam here and you can probably actually can't make this out on camera. It's very hard to see, but there are tiny little dots here, one little slot there and one here. Those are dual ray microphones. Now that first layer of the screen protector mentions some of the specs that you can see, but I'm gonna remove that now because obviously I can't review it with it on. I can't film with it on properly. One of my concerns was, is the screen fully laminated? And I can see straight away that unlike the Keynote 8, this one isn't, but the gap is rather small. It's only approximately about one millimeter, not as bad as some of them that you get that are up to about 2.5 millimeters. So the frame around it is rounded, it is plastic, and you'll see down the bottom we have five Pogo port pins, well the connector for it, for those pins on the keyboard, and it just simply docks in like this, so you place it here, then magnets will pull it into place, and there it is now connected. And this is what it looks like, so not bad at all. We'll test out this stand on the back here. So this having that really firm hinge is good because if it was loose, of course, pressing on it, that's not moving in its current state. You can get it down about that low, still pressing on that. Now it's starting to push down perhaps a little bit. And about the lowest you can go really is there. And of course you can lie that completely flat. That is part of the design. So you can of course close everything up like that and you have quite a nice package there that does look and feel really nice. Now the texture of this, it's rubberized plastic. Well, not plastic, yeah, no, actually it is. Sorry, it's just they put like a rubber over the top of the plastic of that. It's got a nice filling to it, good texture, it's not slippery or anything like that, and it doesn't tend to show fingerprints too bad. So for ports on the left-hand side here, we've got DC in for charging, the Type-C port, and then a micro SD card slot. Now this Type-C port also supports display out, charging, and data, of course. Down the bottom, you'll find one of two side firing speakers, the right speaker, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, volume up and down, and power buttons. These are made out of plastic, but they have a good feel to them, and they are not loose, and they're not going to rattle around. So overall, the build quality is very good. It is metal on the back here as well. 
The frame, as I mentioned, is plastic here. This has that rubberized coating over the top of it. The hinge is made out of metal. The keyboard travel and how firm it is feels really good. Now, one thing this keyboard cannot do is you cannot pop it up to the next level like other tablets will let you, like the Microsoft Surface line, for example, the Surface Pro, that you can put this up to an extra level there, increasing the keyboard comfort when typing. It's just not possible with this model. And just to confirm here that yes, it does charge up via Type-C, so you don't even need to use the DC, and if you do happen to have a Type-C charger, it just needs to have, of course, 12 volts, 2.5 amps, maximum output, and there is a status LED as well. I have just powered it on. It did not take long at all to get to the setup screen here of Windows. So these are language options. We've got German, Spanish, French, Italian, Chinese languages, and Russian and Korean too. So I just killed the lights here and I'm recording without any lights on so you can see the screen a little better because it's reflecting a lot, probably because of the screen protector and the fact that it's a non-laminated display. So for free available space on first boot, you get 104 gigabytes, which is perfectly normal. Windows does take up a bit of space. And when we have a look at the SSD, it doesn't actually list what brand it is here. It's just showing up as a SATA SSD. And in my experience, this is probably a BWIN SSD that they are using in this. Now, if you open it up, you should be able to upgrade it. It will be an M.2 SATA 3 SSD. I did benchmark it and you'll see the speeds are nothing wonderful. So not really that good. Um, they, uh, they're slow on the writes and even the reads a little bit slow there. That should be up around 500. I mean, that's not too bad. It's still a hell of a lot faster than eMMC 5.1 spec, about almost double on the reads there. So that at least will help out with the performance. So I did benchmark it here with Geekbench. And this score is coming out to be a little lower than expected, especially with the multi-core score. And now this should probably be around about 5,000 points, 5,100, 200. It all depends. That's what I got with the Jumper EasyBook X4. That's also using the same chipset, so the Sauron N4100. It could be down to this. So the RAM is running at only 2,133 megahertz, as you can see. It should actually be... 2.4 gigahertz, that's what it supports. So they're not using the fastest RAM possible here. So that's going to make a slight little difference to performance. I mean, overall, these scores are up, of course, over, say, the Apollo Lake N3450. It's gone up about 300 and something points there, the single core score, and this is up only about 300 points. Not a massive difference there. I did install Battery Bar Pro just to have a look at the battery. So it's giving me an estimate of approximately five hours and 41 minutes. So you're looking about five hours, which seems on par with only a uh, 30 watt hour battery. So it's not a super large battery that this has in here because it's 11.6 inches. I really wish they could have squeezed a larger battery in, perhaps say 34 or 37 watt hours would have been of course much better. Okay, so this is explaining why we're not getting those kind of scores in Geekbench 4 that I saw with the Jumper EasyBook X4, because this has a 6 watt TDP and not the 9 that they have said. So the 6 watt is what Intel recommends for tablets, and most people use that. So you can see their power max is 6 watts, the time is 28 seconds. So that explains why we have that difference there. Now you can override this with software, but in a tablet here, it would probably actually get too hot and run into thermal throttling. Now, if you're worried about it activating, no problems here. So it is using Windows 10 Home with a valid license that will be part of the BIOS, so you don't have any problems there. So if you do do a clean new install, make sure you use a driver backup. I'm actually gonna create one now with double driver and upload it to my website. So restore that and everything should be fine. Now, it's not the latest version either because it's a 1709, so you have to run Windows Update to get the latest big, huge updates that come through. So they will take some time to do all that. So just make sure you set aside an hour for updating it. I'm checking that micro SD card slot now, and it's not running at USB 3.0 speed. So maximum speeds are about 2.6, as you could see there. Reads, that's all you're going to get. Writes are slightly slower. So it's just wired up via a USB 2.0 hub, which is unfortunate. I'd love to see them using faster USB 3 Realtek readers. So we do have some positives and I have discovered that while the touchpad does not support Windows Precision drivers, it is in fact very usable. It's good, the accuracy is good, finer movements are okay. Left and right mouse buttons, they're of the clicky type, you can 
probably hear them. They're not too loud. And typing on the keyboard as well is fine because it's lying 100% flat, there's no flex, and they do have a good feel to them. So this is a quality keyboard. Voyo need to take note and try and find whoever the ODM for this keyboard is and use it on their tablets because that uh, VBook that I looked at, the Voyo, what was it, the VBook i5, terrible type cover on that one, absolutely horrible. This on the other hand is good. Now looking at our screen, so it's an IPS panel, 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And it looks all right. For an IPS, we're seeing good color reproduction. Maximum brightness whites is 220 lux, which isn't ideal. Really, I want to see about 250 or over, especially with a non-laminated display. So indoors, it's going to be perfectly fine. You'll probably run it with about 70, 60% brightness. Right now, I have it set to 100%. So when I do dim this down, here you can see it gets quite dim. So that's great for nighttime use without damaging your eyes or reducing some of your eye pain, eye strain of having a really, really bright on the lower setting, which a lot of manufacturers do do, unfortunately. So all in all, I feel it's a good panel. It's just not an amazing panel at all because it could be brighter. That would be good. And I would also like to see fully laminated displays, a lot more of them, since that's what we had on the Keynote 8. Time to take a look at 4K streaming. So this is YouTube, one of my own videos here, so I don't get hit with any copyright problems. I've got the speakers on 100%, and they are definitely not loud enough. So what I will do is just spin the mic around now and give you a sample of the audio. Okay, so just like other Aldi cubes that I've tested out, these speakers are really lacking volume. It's it's really bad. So if you're in a room and you want other people to hear a video or something, then they will probably struggle to hear it. If you're by yourself and you're in a room somewhere, then yeah, they're going to be fine. But if you're in Skype calls as well, they, they're just going to be lacking. So not good speakers at all on this. But at least it's streaming perfectly fine. The wireless is keeping up. Zero drop frames with Internet Explorer with playback here in 4K. Okay, so that is the Audio Cube Keynote 5. It has a very good build quality. The keyboard's nice to type on. Touchpad is okay. It's not controlled with the Windows Precision drivers, unfortunately, but it still does a decent job with tracking with your fingers, with movements and things. Left and right mouse buttons there. So we have a battery life that's only approximately four to five hours, and I think you're gonna really struggle to get five on here. So that is uh, quite disappointing to me. Another disappointment is the screen brightness. So I thought that they may have changed and put other different panel in here or boost the brightness up through the BIOS setting and the way it's configured. But unfortunately, 220 lux, and they've probably kept it and they're capping it at that to help preserve battery life so you won't burn through it so quick. So having a non-laminated display also means a lot of reflections. We do have two no USB 3 port on this, a full size USB 3 port I feel is really needed with this model here. So you're gonna have to carry around a dongle, you're gonna have to use a, a, an adapter of course, or carry around a hub with you. And we don't have stylus support on this either. The speakers, they do sound very poor, they're very weak. They're okay in terms of sound quality for what it is for a tablet, it's just the volume is not there. It's about half of what it should be. Uh, and no, sorry, it sounds like it's at 50% when, when it really should be two times louder than that at 100%. So that really does disappoint. It's a little heavy at 1.33 kilos as well. And overall, it's good, but it doesn't warrant me going into a full in-depth review with this one here, unfortunately. There's just really too many cons and things against it here. So hopefully... Older Cube, they're watching this video, and with the next models, please, full-size USB, three ports, louder speakers, brighter screens, larger batteries, and stylus support would be really great on a model like this. Uh, and for Linux users out there too, it will run Linux, and it seems to be running fine, so use the latest builds. For example, I used uh, Linux Mint. It works on there, and that is fine. Thank you so much for watching this video here. Bye for now.